Bonjour. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this 12th session of these uh, rencontres ex en scène on the topic of acting for tomorrow. The session is called Our Territories Facing Mobility, and we're welcoming Monsieur Jean-Pierre Farandou, the president of SNCF, the French, French Railroads, Mrs. Joanna Roland, the mayor of Nantes who should be re-elected by its municipal council. Do you confirm, Mrs. Roland, that you absolutely, yes, I should be re-elected following the polls last week? Congratulations. And then we welcome also Carl Heinz Lamberts. Uh, hello, Monsieur Lambert. You come from uh, the Ost of Belgium, this, these communities of Belgium, which have the specificity, specificity of being German speaking. It's uh, the official language. Welcome also to uh, sitting next to me, Rémi Weber, the general chairman of the executive board of La Banque Postale, privileged partner of the territories. And welcome to Monsieur. Marwan Jassim Al Sharkal, you're from much further, huh? farther. You're from the Emirates and you're the uh, uh, Director General of Shar Sharjah Investment and Sharak, in Sharuk. Sorry. Welcome to our session. We're very honored to have you with us. The floor is to Pascaline Dupa, who is a member of the Cercle des Economistes, professor at Stanford University in California. So thank you, Pascaline, for being with us. And I'll let you introduce this session before we open up our debates. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Needless to say that the sanitary crisis has really shaken up everything for everybody. Living through an exceptional mo moment, uh, very difficult, but also a source of transformations. So a lot of questions will arise. Do, should we, uh, will we have the same routine of uh, 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 that we had before. Why live in the cities when you can work remotely from your garden in, in the countryside? Uh, will the economy shift to a full digital approach? So before starting our debate on these important changes and their implications on territories and mobility, I think it's important to uh, to place this situation in perspective. We are in an exceptional transformation period, but uh, I'd be a bit provocative, but I would say that it's nothing compared to the transformation the human species and our planet has uh, lived through during the last 100 years. The human experience, when you think about it, has changed more during the last century than uh, during the 100,000 previous years. So today we live 30 years more than our great-grandparents. Uh, life expectancy, uh, we earn six times more than 100 years ago in terms of purchase, purchasing power. Uh, uh, in the in the past, uh, uh, very few people had the, the opportunity to elect their their uh, representatives at the local and national scale, and rec until recently, the people were confined into uh, their region of birth, except for some migration episodes. And most of the people stayed where they were born f for the for their whole lives. Lives. So it's uh, since very recently that the uh, mobility has uh, grown as. Uh, Evolved and uh, one also another important point is the number of airline tickets sold in 1970 was only 300,000, while in 2019 it was four billion plane airplane tickets. So for 2020 it'll be a lot less. We know, but uh, this said, um, if we put the COVID into parentheses or leave it aside a bit, and we think of this mobility, not only the people but also ideas, culture, money, goods travel, our exchange between different parts of the globe and between people on an, uh, on an everyday basis until very recently. So this interconnectivity enables us to know each other better uh, beyond our territories, share innovations, and also to 
um, stick together during strong moments. Uh, we saw that uh, during the anti-racism uh, uh, protest marches. Um, recently, but this interconnectivity gives rise to compli uh, complications. A uh, hundred years ago, it would have taken months for a disease like uh, COVID-19 to propagate the world over. But today, it's a matter of weeks, days even. Super con conductivity can give rise to conflicts, tensions. For example, the uh, the cultural mix seems to generate uh, xen xenophobia in the territories. Uh, the uh, exacerb exacerbated mobility as a cost, sometimes dangerous in terms of impact on the environment and on climate change. And uh, lastly, we're faced with a level of inequalities that has never been uh, witnessed before. An example is like Jeff Bezos, the creator of Amazon, the guru of the mobility of goods. He's the richest man in the world. His wealth is estimated at $150 billion and, it, and it's increasingly growing. It's growing. And let's see, in one minute, Jeff Bezos earns more than what a delivery boy employed by Amazon earns in a year, in a year. And so in this broad context, I think we have at the same time a great opportunity and responsibility. The chance of being able to move around, innovate, change, transform who we are in a few years rather than a few centuries, because we have at our uh, the tools and we have the advanced science also but we also have the responsibility to do all this in respect of the of the planet of everybody's health and in the respect of cultural individualities while um, keeping a, a spirit of understanding between the nations so we thought of the uh, distribution of this incredible wealth that we have the opportunity to create this distribution among individuals in space between territories cities and the countryside between the north and the south and lastly their distribution in time between generations the generations of today and those of the future i'm very pleased to have in this session experts on these stakes to talk about their vision for mobility the community and the territories of tomorrow Jean-Pierre Farandou will be the first to address the issues of the, this panel. Monsieur Farandou, if we talk about the French Railroad, the local elected representatives, citizens come to see you and they say, listen, you're a tool of public service. You have to help us uh, develop our territories because our citizens want performance when it comes to mobility. It has to be attractive, accessible financially. And so these requirements are also on the everyday mobility that which enables us to go to work or visit our friends and, and but also on the national mobility to do business for leisure uh, and even at the European level. And at the same time, the state and the citizens uh, ask that you be profitable and that you invest on your network. So how can you really bring all this together at a time and even with the, if the trains do operate today, but we have to recover and uh, we have to recover and get attract our, our, our customers. I don't see a paradox in what you're saying. I find the I, I see the SNCF in what you say. We are a public interest uh, company. This is not a bad word. You know, we realized during the crisis that people were happy to have companies like ours uh, who, who were there when the country was in distress. Um, and uh, people were very happy to find a national company, uh, French railroads, who have their trains running uh, to transport the care people and uh, freight trains also uh, their, their freight trains operating to uh, save the cereal uh, season. And so the SNCF is, is there, it was there. So there's no contradiction between this, these issues of quality on the one hand, which is rightfully expected by the uh, clients, and the economic constraints. Uh, you know, we, since the 1st of January, we are privatized and we have a lot more uh, rigor in our management because we are like a business like anybody else and we have to be uh, profitable. And so I would like to maybe make a few changes and to in our companies go back to our sources and go back to our territories we know the uh, commercial sncf we know the tgv for example but i think we have to go back to our territories and this is why i'm delighted to take part in this round table because as a uh, 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 you said just before, we have to be closer to the citizens. They live somewhere in pl locations, in territories, in ecosystems, and they need proximity. 
And I think that the major change the SNCF has started is to change the way we look at things. We should no longer consider ourselves as a national corporation which from Paris looks down at the territories. On the contrary, we have to be in the Loire territories, uh, in Nantes, for example. We have to look at things from Nantes and not from Paris. And uh, railroad mobility, what it boils down to when you're in Nantes and how you can get, you're connected to Europe and to other local, uh, regional capitals, how from Nantes we consider the issues of uh, territorial development, but not only from Nantes, but for all the cities around Nantes. And uh, remember, the freight also, freight transport. A network means that you have businesses, there are ports like Saint-Nazaire, for example, on the Atlantic. So how from Saint-Nazaire we can be connected to the railroad system? So it's no longer from Paris that you will make decisions from the territories. And the impulse I'm trying to give is to define a national railroad, not just not one single strategy, but several territorial regional strategy. And I'm trying to work with all the, the heads of the regions, the local authorities, to work on their vision of the, their needs in terms of rural services. And I'm there to render this service, find balances, find the right balance. But I think that by accepting this differentiated perception, uh, accepting this adapted way of dealing with things in the short, medium, and long term, I think that this new SNCF that adapts to the territories will uh, enable to take up the challenges. And the second thing is that mobility is only a mean. You have to think about the way of life. Uh, and how people live, and this is how this uh, this crisis is really uh, shaking things up. Uh, the way of life of tomorrow will not be the same. We talk about remote work, but it's the same for enterprises also. A business company like SNCF, since it's a public service, must give a lot of thought with the elected representatives, local authorities, on how we adapt to the new ways of life. Uh, uh, there's a new way of adapting mobility to new need, new needs. So a uh, way of life, uh, a way mobility, and the train doesn't generate CO2 emissions. So, uh, so everybody agrees. But in France, we had the chance of being among the pioneers of the railroad uh, activity uh, at the end of the 19th century with the Fresine plan. And today, this network, the proximity network, is aging. It, it calls for investments. Who can invest? The state? The local authorities, the territories, the private sector, uh, you have real, true, uh, genuine needs for investment. So I'm talking, I'm thinking you're talking about the smaller uh, services like, uh, yeah, but they have to be connected to the larger uh, railroad lines. So, don't, so what you, you, you serve. So if you live next to a uh, train station, well, you have to have it operating, you know, it's like, uh, and freight, you have to irrigate the whole territory, go back to the main stations, and then it's the small, uh, small streams that form the big rivers, you know, so it's a, and the question is a question of money, it's a question of money, like always, so you have to set priorities, public money is uh, a scarce resource, the needs are very large for education, for health, health care, so we're at a very important moment of our democracy. We have a new government uh, coming in, and this new government will have to set priorities and see what efforts it wants to bring in uh, with the local authorities, with the territories, how the state and the regions can take, o take up uh, this uh, modernization of the system. It's not just a question of infrastructure. It's also a matter of service, of rolling equipment, and complementarity with the road network. And I'm ready to Try new experiments, you know. I think in the territory there's this idea of experimenting. It's part of the solutions. Let's be bold. Let's try things out. Let's uh, experiment things. And with the territories, let's find the well suit, the best suited solutions. So, with the road, you can no longer talk about mobility without considering the train, bus systems, cars. Uh, yes, it's an um, intermodal solution. Maybe there are new means to invent, new solutions to come up with. There, we're giving some thought on the light trains, we call them. So, uh, as opposed, so you have the, the, the tramway, for example, the streetcars, and in the middle, and you have the train, and then you need, you're, you're missing the lighter train. It's not only a train; it's, a, it's an operational system we need to invent. Where I'm looking for regions and territories that uh, would like to come along and uh, try to 
make the proof of concept, uh, you know, come up with a prototype. So I want to rely on those territories who are ready to uh, take up the challenge. So, Mr. Hollande, I think, I hope we've heard your call. Now we'll hand over the floor to our guest, uh, who is the farthest away, Marwan Al Sarkal. You're in the uh, UAE, uh, the Emirates. You're in a world that connects the world. <laughs> you know, so how can an investment company like yours favor this mobility in, on the planet and help the territories, the richer territories, and those who are less rich to develop harmoniously? Uh, the introduction uh, I'm happy to be part of this uh, conference here uh, if we talk about uh, mobility actually the United Arab Emirates economy is, is is basically focusing on logistics and and connecting east to west and and that's why you would notice in the United Arab Emirates with seven different Emirates we have managed to improve uh, all of the seaports and airports to create the best mobility and that made made an impact on the whole economy of the United Arab Emirates. What we have seen uh, in the past that the investment in the infrastructure, putting the best uh, facilities when it comes to the logistics sector, with the seaports that we have, Jabal Ali Seaport, uh, Rashid Seaport, Khalid Seaport, uh, Zaid uh, Seaport, all actually makes a great impact on the economy of the United Arab Emirates. So invest.